Hello, Tex Andrews with the Light Zone Project. And in this video, we will begin talking about the Relight Tool. Along with the Zone Mapper, the Relight Tool is Light Zone's special tone mapping tool. The Zone Mapper preceded it and was the thing that differentiated Light Zone from all other programs. And the Relight Tool had an ancestor that was also used for tone mapping in the early versions of Light Zone, but when the Relight tool was developed and launched, it was a revelation and for a while just added incredible power to the Light Zone program over all other programs. The Relight tool has to some extent been copied by other programs now, so it is not as unique. Nevertheless, it's still a great tool and still extremely powerful. I'll go over the basics of it in this and I also want to start by showing you one very important difference between the Zone Mapper tool and the Relight tool. The Zone Mapper tool, when you deploy it, it doesn't do anything to your image. You have to actually manipulate the tool by creating a zone lock and moving it up or down to do something to the image. This is not the case with the Relight tool. The Relight tool does not come out in a neutral state. It comes out hot. So you see immediately the change that was made in the image. There's the original. That's the Relight tool without any adjustments being done to it. So let's talk about the different parts of the Relight tool. Like all, uh, almost all the tools in LightZone, it has a tool settings tab and a color selection tab. We'll talk about that in another video. And then up here in the main body of the tool, it has five sliders. A shadow slider, a highlight slider, a detail slider, a depth slider, and a fuzz slider. The first three sliders are pretty straightforward and obvious what they do. The depth and fuzz sliders remain to this day rather mysterious. Um, we'll talk about them separately. Uh, even old hands in light zone don't have maybe the a complete understanding of, of what these two sliders actually do. But playing with them actually can make changes in your image. It's just sometimes it's a little unpredictable. So the shadow slider, this controls the shadows independently of the highlight slider. If you remember with the Zone Mapper tool, you can to some extent also control highlights and shadows independently, but in another way they also work in concert with one another because if you say move a highlights up, you're also going to be lightening up shadows down here unless you do a lock on the shadows to leave them alone. Nevertheless, when you make an adjustment either to the lights or the darks with the Zone Mapper tool, there's always the potential that you're making another adjustment somewhere else that you maybe don't exactly intend. One more reason to use the Zone Mapper tools judiciously. With the Relight tool, you are much more able to control the lights and the darks independently. So, if you move the shadow slider to the right, it lightens all the shadows quite a bit. Move it to the left, it darkens them. As you can see, this slider really has a lot of power to it. It can also, however, result in some somewhat unnatural looking effects. And you should notice that this sky is starting to look very HDR, high dynamic range type of uh, imagery. A lot of HDR images are a little heavy handed and you can get heavy handed with the Relight tool as well. When you deploy the tool, it comes out at level 3.0. The highlight slider also works independently and it controls obviously the highlights. But 
its operation is opposite that of the shadow slider. So when you go to the right, you're actually darkening down the highlights. And when you go to the left, you are lightening them. So the two tools kind of work opposite of one another. Then there's a detail slider, and this is, I like to think of it, it's a local contrast slider. I like to think of it as kind of a pre-sharpener. You need to be careful using this slider if you are also going to use sharpening in your images. You can push this too far, and then when you start to sharpen, even your regular, perhaps quite modest sharpening can result in halos and other, you know, artifacts uh, that are deleterious to your image. So you have to be careful how to use this thing. Typically, depending on your camera, um, anything over 2.5 is going to be starting to be problematic. And you may want to check this one-to-one -one just to make sure what you're doing with this thing. Like I said, it's a local contrast slider. We'll show you a little bit more about that in a subsequent video. When it is deployed, when the Relight tool is deployed, that slider is at 1.5. Then down here is the depth slider, which when deployed comes out all the way over to the right at 64.0. And then when you move it to the left, I think you just saw a kind of change in the image. And the description in the help files is that this affects the sort of depth of the image. It's, it's a funny kind of slider and as I said when you deploy the Relight tool it's all the way over here on the right hand side but you can make adjustments to it and the, the changes can be kind of subtle but when you go from one end of the slider to the other you ought to see a significant change. Then there's the fuzz slider and this slider is even more mysterious. Um, here it is when you deploy the tool it's at 0 0.1 when you roll it all the way to the other end as you can see it's hard to see that it did anything and that's one of the things that makes it mysterious but it does do things it's just that you sometimes have to look uh, at your image at high magnifications to see exactly what it's doing and like I said, don't feel bad if, if this leaves you scratching your head. Lots of people who've been using LightZone for a long time still have questions about what these two sliders do. In the next video, we'll start manipulating these sliders a little bit, and I'll talk about neutralizing the real light tool.